With over 12,500 students living in dorms and apartments provided by the University of Maryland, a portion of the school's budget must be allocated to supplying food for these on-campus residents. The department tasked with the job of meeting the food needs of the university's growing on-campus population is the University of Maryland Dining Services. UMD Dining began as a one-building campus service supplying a small amount of on-campus students with food. Following a campus fire in November of 1912, where nearly every campus dorm and dining facility were destroyed, the campus dining service was reconstructed physically and built into the large-scale multi-facility service that it is today. The most recent large change to the dining facilities was the addition of the South Campus Diner in 1974 which gave the newly constructed dormitories on South Campus a nearby dining hall. With three main dining halls, a large food court, and multiple cafes and convenience stores, the impact of money spent on the dining services is felt across campus in the 38 locations. Today, the largest responsibilities of the dining locations is to provide the thousands of students living on campus with the daily food requirements they need while providing dietary options that keep students healthy and comfortable. Unfortunately, UMD Dining is a service that has multiple problems. These problems include lacking a large variety of healthy options and high quality food. Only offering students mandatory and financially straining dining plans and lacking dining halls open during highly demanded dinner hours. Having the campus dining service not run as well as it could be leads to many negative effects. It it is important to realize that the quality of dining services directly affects student academic performance, the interest of high quality prospective students to the university, student retention rates, and overall student happiness. The Dining Service Administration needs to correct its flaws and adapt to meet the changing needs of students, and the only way to accomplish this is by having more students engaged and participating in the Dining Services decision-making process. The University of Maryland, like most other higher education institutions, adopts a matrix structure to organize its departments. The Director of Dining Services is Colleen Wright Rivera. She reports up the chain of command to the Director of Student Affairs, Linda Clement. The President of the University, Wallace Lowe, oversees all general operations. Thus, in order to introduce effective change, Ms. Wright Rivera must be the main point of contact. Any changes are initially approved by her so that they may be relayed to the other departments. The vision statement has been updated numerous times to reflect the current goals of the dining services, and 2015's goals preach concepts that theoretically should lead to a world-class dining experience. While the vision goals strive to provide excellence in all we do, the current quality standards show that this version is not being accomplished. Creating a list of goals is not enough. The most important part of striving for excellence is working to accomplish the vision. The most basic option for a meal plan is $2,206.50 and provides a student with 1,075 dining points and 342 residential turp bucks. This means that students are paying about $1.50 on the dollar. Therefore, their favorite wraps which come out to about 9.5 dining points, are actually costing them $14.25. This does not even consider the additional price of if a student should decide to buy a drink. The correlation of points to dollars becomes l even less appealing when recognizing that many points will also go to waste. During finals week, at the end of the semester, the university enacts a spending cap that limits the number of points a student may use daily. Students who have budgeting, uh, who have budgeted correctly, may be left with an excess due to their inability to spend over a certain amount each day. It would make sense for the university to roll these points over so that the student may use these points for the following semester. However, this is not the case. Instead, the points will simply expire and the students lose the points and therefore the money that they have spent. This would not be so horrible of a problem if it was rare for a student to have leftover points, but the reality is a large majority do. In fact, 73% of students surveyed said they had to give away points 
that they because they had too many, and 68% said they were still left with points and could not use them after the spending cap was put in place. Due to the restrictive nature of this plan, food also becomes unavailable after certain hours. The, di the dinner menu transitions from the late night transitions into late night, offering only greasy or unhealthy options, or it completely closes. Then, students with late classes may not have any dining options available. In fact, 45.4% of students acknowledged that they would often have to skip meals due to the inconvenient diner hours. It is clear to see that this financial weight is strongly affecting the student body, so much so that many of them take into account when considering living on the dorms and on campus. When polled, over 68% of students agreed that the mandatory meal plan was the biggest factor in determining whether or not they would move off campus and seek independent housing so that they would not have to purchase the meal plan and could instead select their own dining options. This, this statistic should not come as a surprise when considering the overall satisfaction rating of the diner where 86.36% of students identified that they were very dissatisfied with the campus dining options. The remaining percentage of students indicated that they were only somewhat satisfied and would still appreciate reform. Students who were surveyed contributed their dissatisfaction to the price, saying that it was not only unreasonable from the point to dollar value, but even more difficult to be satisfied when considering the poor lack of offerings. 90% indicated that they ate the same item daily due to lack of healthy or appealing variety. A surprising finding is that the dining halls do not have a problem with budget numbers from the university. Instead, they have internal administrative decision-making problems. Multiple sources confirm that over the last three years, the dining halls have brought in total revenues over $145 million. While many students may assume that the blame for low quality food, lack of healthy options, and financially difficult meal plans should be placed on administrators who aren't giving enough money to improve the service, this is the wrong conclusion. Campus dining services are making a steady profit and choosing to hold this money for other purposes instead of investing this money into improving the current quality levels or lowering the current prices. Furthermore, the university has suggested that the point system offers an opportunity for students to learn about budgeting, finding ways to use their points efficiently throughout the semester. However, this does not account for the students who are left with an overwhelming number of points that the university will then put a cap on. Students are then paying exaggerated prices for points that they don't even use. The university ensures that there are other opportunities for students to use these points at locations such as 251 North and Adele's. Yet again, other complications, complications arise here as 251 closes in the final days of the semester and Adele's receives such overwhelming traffic that it cannot accommodate all the students who have these excess points. This contradicts the suggested budgeting policy because students are then spending frivolously on expensive meals when they would have otherwise saved that money for better use. When dining at Adele's, students must also tip for service in cash, meaning that they must spend additional money in order to, to take advantage of this dining option. Our proposal of a multifaceted approach will resolve these issues. The Department of Dining Services makes a sizable profit that could instead be used to offer more flexibility to students. A non-mandatory dining plan allows for residents to tailor their food intake to their specific dietary guidelines. Terrapin Express is a tremendous step in increasing the options available to students. However, this is not part of the standard dining plan. Partnering with organizations House and Stamp will allow for the acquisition of such healthier options, including SalarWorks, Subway, and Green Tidings. There are many different ways that students can contribute so that the dining services would mod modify and develop our current dining plan. For instance, students can participate in internships and programs offered by different departments at UMD, lead, educate, act, and facilitate otherwise known as the LEAF Outreach Team, offers internships every semester to LEAF out across campus at special events. Students can also participate in volunteering work at the Farmer's Market, which is organized and managed by the Department of Dining Services. Farmer's Markets provide an opportunity to purchase food directly from local farms. Local food is full of flavor, 
harvest it at its nutritional peak and available to the market soon after. It doesn't travel long distances, so buying from local farms reduces the environmental impact of bringing food to your table. Since the average food item travels about 1,500 miles to reach us, this also provides support for the local economy. Students' active participation in these such programs will awaken dining services and remind the Maryland community of the importance of consuming healthy local food. By staying connected with the dining services online and offline, we will be able to raise awareness of the need for dining plan improvement. One of the more influential student entities at the University of Maryland, the Student Government Association, serves as the representative body for all undergraduate students. The SGA formulates resolutions to address student concerns, assist student groups, and advocate through the appropriate university, local, and national government channels. Students can become members of the SGA, speak for a student identity, and pinpoint the ineffectiveness of our current dining plan. The University of Maryland currently boasts about offering green dining. However, by adopting a non-mandatory and more flexible dining plan, it can actually represent the cause. High quality and healthy options available at these other locations will help alleviate the obesity epidemic while supporting local groups. Improving the UMD dining plan will not only better the lives of students, but campus as a whole.